I think the most valuable writing advice I can give you is focus on the process, not the product. So in this video I'm going to talk about two things that will help you with your writing process. Okay, first thing we're going to talk about here is brainstorming. Because if you're finding that writing is painful or slow or difficult, it might be partly because you're not comfortable with doing this thing. Every time you write, whether you're working on an outline or coming up with some dialogue, you're actually doing little micro brainstorms. The good news is, brainstorming is a skill, which means if you work on it, you can get better at it. Brainstorming is not just free associating random thoughts. The technical term for that activity is procrastinating. Brainstorming is thinking in a very loose, creative way about a specific question. Like, what kind of events could happen in a Western? Or, what does she answer when he says that? Or, how does she steal the diamond? And then step two is, within that very specific arena, you let go and pay attention to whatever comes into your head without judging it or discarding it. And this is the most important part. You write it down. Brainstorm on the page. Maybe you can do it in your head, but there is something about writing it down that changes your ability to work with the material. You get to see it as a concrete thing that you can use or play with as part of a larger concrete work of art that you are trying to build. Seriously, write it down. Now, I mentioned letting go, and I said that very casually, but letting go is not easy. Our brains are constantly sorting and prioritizing and defending against thoughts. It happens so fast we're not even aware of it, but this sorting process helps us to manage and survive. Except, as with many survival instincts like fight or flight, it's not always helpful when you're trying to do something other than survive. This, by the way, is why you see so few scripts written by birds or squirrels. However, silver lining. If your brain is constantly sorting and discarding all this stuff, that means it's in there. Your brain is working away, creating, discovering, inventing all the time. You just have to stop clamping down and swatting away at your creativity. And the way that you get better at doing that is practice brainstorming. Practice letting go. Do easy versions. Practice with no project involved. Keep the pressure and the stakes low. Take small steps. And give this time. Work on it now and then over months. Go online and do some research on mindfulness and on the psychological concept of flow. I know this sounds very woo-woo, but I promise you it can become a very practical part of your writing process. Now, when you work on letting go, you're going to find the biggest obstacle is self-consciousness. The problem is, how do you not think about yourself? Well, the only way that you can not think about anything is to actively think about something else. Focus on the question. Like, how does she steal the diamond? Sometimes just choose one word in the question and focus on that. Then write down ideas. They won't make sense. They don't have to be in order. You don't have to do it fast. No one is watching. There's only one rule. Do not edit or criticize. No matter how tempting it is, no matter how obvious it is that something's not going to work, practice refusing to judge things. Start to notice when you think, that's bad, that won't work, they won't like this, I'll be judged, I'll get in trouble. This is not about willpower or changing your personality. Just try and get into the habit of paying attention to when that negative voice is talking. Because once you're paying attention to it, once you see what it's doing, it runs away. Get stupid. Write down the most outrageously bad idea you can think of. You can always throw it away later, but right now it tells that negative voice, I don't give a Plus, 
Sometimes those outrageously bad ideas help you to think of something that you never would have thought of that's good. Sometimes thinking about the opposite of what you're looking for can bring new things to mind. Like in this case, how do you protect a diamond from being stolen? This is a process, not the end result, so you're allowed to ask, how did other movies and shows do this? How did people steal things in real life? You can't just rip off what they did, but when you're brainstorming, start with that. Then think of how you might mess with it or twist it around to make it yours. Step away and come back later. There's no rule that you have to do this all at one time. It's not a stunt, it's your work. Do some now, do some later. And then know when to stop. No one is gonna give you a prize for the most items in a brainstorm. You're only gonna use one. When you can't think of anything more than something you've got is it. Even if it's awful, awful is better than nothing. When you have something, anything, then you can work. Take your brainstorm list and see how any parts of it might fit in with what you've already got. Start that process of sorting and judging and making choices. Stop brainstorming and go back to writing. Okay, part two, scrap piles. A lot of writing happens when you're not writing. All sorts of stuff can come to you at all sorts of times. Make yourself a set of documents or folders on your computer or in your file cabinet where you can put all this stuff that's gonna come to you when your writer brain is operating. Think of it this way. Have you ever seen an artist's workshop or an auto mechanics workshop? In either case, they have all these specialized bins and cabinets and shelves and drawers for the raw materials of their work. That's what this is. These are some good scrap pile categories. Stories, events, characters, places, jobs, themes, bits of dialogue, names, observations, clippings. Whenever I read an article or a news story about some kind of person or place or way of life or job that I don't know much about or that I think is interesting, I just grab a copy and put it in a folder, in a scrap pile. Over time, if you keep dropping things into them, these scrap piles become an amazing way to stir your creativity. Just FYI, all this stuff that I'm teaching you here comes from the scrap pile of things I wrote down for myself while I was trying to teach myself how to write. But the real secret of scrap piles is, even if you don't use the stuff that's in them, they still help you write. Stuff comes to you more often and more easily when you get in the habit of writing it down and valuing it. When you make a scrap pile and you start putting stuff in it, you start noticing more stuff and you start thinking more about the stuff you're noticing. And that's really the point, isn't it? A process, a method, a habit to get into to make writing easier and more productive. That's enough for now, go write something. If you like this video, like this video and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to work with me on your projects one-on-one, -on -one, go to writingforscreens.com. Testing, okay. I think the most valuable writing I can, writing I can give you, what can I give you writing? Blah. Two things that help with your writing, pre -pre -pre is focus on the product, not the process. <laughs> That's backwards, you idiot. <laughs> I can get yeah, yeah, vazzle, vazzle, vazzle.